So I remember when I was in seventh and eighth grade, and you know the transition from sixth to seventh grade is such a drastic change, at least for me it was, because when I got into seventh grade, you're trying to figure out like your identity, right? You're trying to figure out who you can fit in with, so you, you hang out with different groups, and once you finally do, and you find that group, it's very apparent, at least for me in seventh and eighth grade, that there were groups. There were different tables, different interests, different likes, right? And I remember being part of this particular group and we were, we were the group that you did not want to mess with, right? In the means of, of, we were, we were the, the big bad table, right? I mean, we didn't hurt anybody or anything like that. It was just like, you didn't want to mess with this table. I, I don't know how I got involved but it was just like we had common in interests of playing sports we love football we love basketball so we we were able to get together but i just remember man this just this table was the table everybody knew us right and then yeah the other table right of, di of different interests right they you, you could tell that they were well off they like fashion they they like dressing um a lot uh dressing dressing up look dressing up with the latest fad, right? The latest fashion trends. And then you had those smart table, and then you had a different ethnicity table, right? It's very apparent that there were different tables. And if you did not like the same interest, then obviously you weren't part of this table. It was hard for you to be, uh, hard for you to even have a conversation with somebody that didn't have the same likes. Because if you didn't have the same likes as us, then you don't belong in this table. You, you can find yourself another table. And I remember just looking at, just looking back at it, it reminds me of this day of age, right? And for those who, who are listening, I, my faith background, I, 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 I come from the Christian faith background, right? And it reminds me of a story of Jesus. And for those who are watching or not, in the faith or not a Christian, please bear with me. I know there's some, uh, there's some, there's stigma around that. And uh, please bear with me, stick with me. But there's a story that Jesus was telling uh, in, in ancient scriptures and it was found in the gospel of Luke. It says in Luke 14, 15 to 24, it says, when one of the dinner guests heard Jesus' remarks, he said to Jesus, happy are those who will feast in God's kingdom. And the thing with Jesus is, what I love about Jesus, he loves to tell stories, right? To get his point across. And usually the story, the point that he's trying to make is not usually in the story, right? Jesus loved to tell stories to bring his point across. And so in, it continues on and Jesus replies, it says, a certain man hosted a large dinner and invited many people. When it was time for the dinner to begin, he sent his servant to tell the invited guests, come, the dinner is now ready. One by one, they all began to make excuses. The first one told them, I bought a farm and must go and see it. Please excuse me. Another one said, I bought five teams of oxen. Who buys five teams of oxen? And I'm going to check, check on them. Please excuse me. And another says, I'm married. Well, I can't because I'm married. So uh, there's that. So I can't come. So when he returned, the servant reported these excuses to his master. The master of the house became angry and said to his servant, go quickly to the city's streets, the busy ones and the side streets and bring the poor, crippled, blind and lame. And the servant said, master, your instructions have been followed and there's still room. And the master said to the servant, go to the highways and back alleys and urge people to come in so that my house will be filled. And I tell you, no one of those who were invited will taste my dinner. No one of those who were invited will ever taste my dinner. And again, Jesus was telling a story and all the stories end up being about something else that wasn't really discussed in the story. That's that's. That's why Jesus was such a great communicator, right? Because he loved to tell stories. And this, this narrative that I just told you was, wasn't, it was about a party that this person hosted. And he had a large house because he, he ended up invited, uh, inviting a lot of other people in his house to fill in his house if there was still space in his 
house. And so this verse is not particularly about a party. It's about the kingdom of God, of how the kingdom of God is like and how God welcomes people into the kingdom of God. And you got to notice, right, the first part of the, the party that this person invited specifically and with intention ended up not coming because they had all types of excuses. The first two, right, it seemed like they were a person of means, meaning they had a lot of resources. They're probably they're probably wealthy. They're well off because the first man said he bought land, so he needs to go check on it. And the other one said, I just bought a team of oxen, so I need to go check on them too, right? It seemed like they just bought it because they didn't, they didn't really, they didn't really do, they didn't really shop for it. They just, it's kind of like Amazon and you don't really know, you just base it on reviews, right? You just buy it. But then sometimes when you get the product, it's not really what it says on the reviews. It's kind of like what these two, I'm going to assume that they were, they were men of means, right? So these two men or these two people ended up buying things that they probably didn't know what they were buying. So they needed to go check on them. So they're out of the party. And the third one is so classic because I, I mean, we still, as a husband, we still use this excuse, right? When we're trying to get out of something, right? Oh, I can't, uh, my wife, you know, like I have to, we have plans tonight or my wife, you just put the blame on her, right? What, my, my wife said, I can't go out. I'm sorry. Or this man probably partied so hard that he just didn't want to go to another party. And so the master now, the servant goes back to the master and says, Master, the people that you invited, they're not coming anymore. For some reason, the master got angry, right? Because he prepared the whole house. And I'm assuming these people were, we told him, he's like, yeah, we'll be there. Don't worry, we'll be there. And they ended up not coming and so the master was mad for some reason and he was just like, you know what? He told his servant to go out there and say, hey, go outside of the, the house and just find anybody that wants to come to this party. Go to the crippled, go to the homeless, go to the blind, tell them they are welcome in this house. So the servant did exactly what the, exactly what the master did, right? And the servant was just like, master, there's so much room left in this home. And the master was like, okay, well, we got to fill this house. We got a lot of room. Okay, let's fill this house. I, you know what I want you to do next? I want you to leave this house. He went a step further. He didn't even start in his own town anymore. He invited, I'm assuming, the whole town because he told his servant to go out of this town, go to another country, find anybody that wants to come into this house because they are invited into this house. And it's so amazing about this story is because I'm in this phase in, in, in my, my faith journey that the ones that this person, the host, in, invited, I'm going to assume that they were the blessed ones, the ones that have it all together, the ones that are supposed to be the, the model of what a good you know, what a good Christian is or what good, what a good religious leader would look like. Because he invited all the right people, people with resources, people that were married, people who had seemed like they had everything together. But they ended up not coming. They ended up having all kinds of excuses. These were people who were probably in this day of age knew the exact 10 principles of how to live a Christian life. But they ended up not coming. They ended up making excuses. But it just goes to show you that the kingdom of God is not for those who got it all together, if you notice in this story. It was for people who are actually outsiders. People who didn't feel like they had a voice. People who feel like they were marginalized. Who are outsiders. Who were the crippled. Who were the homeless. People who probably didn't have resources they didn't have an education they didn't have privilege but jesus telling the story this this host of this big party and i just wonder how big his house was because he man he invited a lot of people right but he told 
the servant to go out and find the people outside and bring them because bring them in because they are welcome here. You know, you may be in this faith journey right now, or you may not want to have anything to do with faith. You know, I was thinking a couple weeks ago that we were well, I was, you know, I'm out of the church for a while. I'm in graduate school. I'm going to seminary. I'm trying to study more about God and get a master's in divinity, right? Or, or God, so to speak. But it's a breath of fresh air is because I'm, I'm in this phase right now where I'm trying not to have any agenda or any judgment. Because for so long now, I grew up in the church and God bless the church, right? But there's a lot of things I need to change. And I remember a couple weeks ago when we were celebrating my friend's birthday and we were outside of our friend's garage and we had a table outside and we were just talking, kind of catching up because it's been so long since we've seen each other. And it was just such a, for me, it was such a beautiful moment because we were having conversations about God and come to find out one of the people at the table was an atheist and i remember even back in the day when we found out somebody was an atheist if you were like me i was just like oh yeah this dude's an atheist this girl's an atheist oh i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna get all my 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 bible verses out i'm gonna read i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna say all the things that i've read about apologetics and things things of that nature those things are great for knowledge right but for some reason when i was hearing this guy talk and 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 he was telling his experiences and i was just like whoa he knows a lot and everything about him was just like he he knows a lot about god he knows a lot about spirituality he knows all the things he grew up in the church but i remember like even growing up even in some evangelical christian circles now that we uh, even now when they have an if there's an atheist at the table right they they try to they try to have this agenda like i'm going to listen to him but i'm going to try to convert him i'm going to try to get him um to see my views and see why if he doesn't believe what i believe then he's going to go somewhere that he doesn't want to go to we have this agenda and i'm saying we because i was part of that I remember when I was 13 and we went camping and I remember this, he was, he, he, I remember he was such a nice guy, right? But I remember in camping and we were talking about God and he was just like, I don't believe in God. And I just remember getting so defensive. It's like, what do you mean you don't believe in God? He's like, oh, here comes the lightning, but lightning didn't really come, right? I told him like, you're going to get electrocuted by the lightning because you don't believe in God, but there was no lightning. And I remember going back to the story of with our friends and we were talking and I'm hearing this, uh, him speak about his experiences of him not believing in God. It was just such, for me, it was such a profound moment. Because for the first time in my life, I was actually trying to listen to the guy without trying to convert the guy, first of all. But it was such a beautiful conversation because you can just see in his body language and how passionate he was that something was there. Cause I remember even just going, even in a, a, like when we find out somebody's an atheist, like we would listen to them. It's like, oh man. And then after that, we talk amongst our Christian friends and our table of all Christians and say, oh man, he's so lost. He's searching. You can tell that he's just, he's so empty or some weird thing. Like as if we know what he's really feeling. Right? We, uh, we have this savior complex. But isn't this story, Jesus was saying that, no, go outside. Let's find the people who are outsiders. You may be even in church right now, wondering like, what is going on? I feel like an outsider. But we have in these churches of saying, you be, we, I want you to feel like you belong. But if you don't believe like us though, well, I don't know. I'm gonna try to save you. Jesus did the opposite. It says, go outside. Find the people who are outsiders. Find the people who don't feel like they belong at the table. And the cool group is telling them, well, you can't be part of this table unless you believe like us, live like us. Because if you don't, you don't belong here. We say you do, but you really don't. 
and if you try to push back, then I don't know. You might be a backslider. You might be a heretic, right? But I'm starting to believe that there's something about God's love that is just so, you can't comprehend it and box it in. Because that's what we try to do is we try to box it in. Say you're in, you're out. No, I think God welcomes all. He really does. He goes outside and finds the crippled, the blind, the poor. Further on in our context, are we willing to welcome an anti-vaxxer? Somebody who got vaccinated. Somebody who's not wearing a mask. Somebody who is wearing a mask. You know what the point, I think, of life is? is people. Is loving people. You know, Jesus was just like, Jesus was such a heretic himself. Because he would read the Torah, he would read the Old Testament, and he told his disciples, but I, what, you know what I say now? You know what my new commandment is? Is to love one another. And I think that is the point. Is how do we love one another? being in the presence of somebody without having any agendas but really just trying to love on them and really care for them and really listen to them and then you go to so goes and then you you listen to the conversation you have a, a meaningful conversation with somebody that hasn't really have the same views as you and you come to find out that you actually are the same people that they are human too going through real struggles of their own they have deep things that they're thinking about and reflecting about. And it goes to show, it's like, wow, man, I didn't see it in that point of view. But here, nowadays, man, woo, it's hard. You say something, you just got to expect to get badgered by the police of Twitter, the police of Instagram. Of all these comments as if we were experts at all of those things that we claim on our comments about certain issues about a meme for crying out loud we get defensive and we try to do all these things to defend ourselves defend our view i get all of that but i want at what cost at what cost And I'm preaching to myself. These are things that are going through in my mind. And I say this just to kind of frame it in a way where, man, I'm, there's some struggles that I'm going through and some things that I don't agree with of other people, but am I really, am I loving them? As simple as, simple as that. Am I listening to them? Do I have an agenda? Oh, Jesus says, no, this is my new commandment. To love one another. Jesus is essentially saying in this story that you are welcome at this table. You are welcome. You may not feel like it. There might be people that are making you feel like you're not welcome at this table. In my name. Jesus is there. At the, at the name of Jesus. But if you come across this, let, let me tell you that you are welcome. That God wants to throw you a party because you are welcome. Man, if we somehow come in that mindset, that perspective, I think the world will be a better place. It won't be all there, but it will be a better place. If we learn to accept people at the table for who they are. Jesus says, love one another.